Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, the SPC Tutorials. As you all know, I'm Dr. Joseph or Mr. SPC. Please, as you are watching this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. In today's video, we shall be discussing some exam likely questions. Alright? Okay, that is post UME grammar classes where exam like questions will be what? Released or predicted. Now, the first topic we'll be taking is what? Nutrition. Everybody knows what nutrition is. The ability of an organism to obtain its food from the external environment is called what? Nutrition. For what? For life processes such as metabolic processes, respiration, the repair of one tissues, and so on and so forth. Now, we have two types of respiration, right? Two types of nutrition. We have, we have the autotrophic nutrition, we have the autotrophic nutrition, and we have what? The heterotrophic heterotrophic nutrition, all right? Under the autotrophic, we have two types, photosynthetic and chemosynthetic. So, photosynthetic nutrition and chemosynthetic are, on, are subdivisions of what? Autotrophic nutrition. Then, under heterotrophic, you have so many of them. You have symbiotic nutrition, we have holozoic, we have a uh, Saprophytic, we have a, a mutualistic, we have commensalistic. All of these are uh, they are types of heterotrophic what? nutrition, right? So you know that under holozoic, you now have uh, that is where you have the omnivores, the carnivores, the herbivores, the scavengers, and the sacrivores. All of them belong to. Holozoic nutrition. So the first one we're tackling right now is photosynthetic nutrition. This marker is bad. The word photo means light, isn't it? So photosynthesis is a process whereby green plants, I did not say plants, I said it is a process whereby green plants manufacture their own food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll with the use of carbon four oxide and water with the use of carbon four oxide and water to produce glucose to produce glucose and what oxygen as their by products photosynthesis is a process whereby so green plants manufacture or synthesize their own food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll in the presence of what sunlight and chlorophyll with the use of water Carbon four oxide to produce glucose and what? Oxygen. So please, they'll ask you. They'll ask you this question. Now, you have, okay, before I put, okay, please, the reverse of this equation, this equation expresses what? Photosynthesis. The reverse of it is respiration. If I will not be having what? Which means this one will come this way. I'll be having C6H12O6 plus. C moles of oxygen to produce what? C moles of carbon four oxide plus C moles of water plus what? 38 ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now, in photosynthesis, ATP is not produced, but once you turn it like this, the reactant becomes the product and the product becomes the reactant. But in respiration, energy is produced. Which is what ATP. Please, during glycolysis, two ATP is produced alongside pyruvic acid. All right, but during Krebs cycle, thirty six ATP are produced. So two plus thirty six, you have what thirty eight. So they will ask you the total ATP produced during respiration or aerobic respiration is dash. Please, it is what thirty eight ATP, not thirty six, not thirty two, not thirty. Thirty six a thirty eight. ATP, not 36, okay? Now, of course, respiration occurs in the powerhouse of the cell called what? The mitochondria. The mitochondria is the region where respiration occurs. The, in photosynthesis, let me say this. Oh, God of Nazareth, okay? We have, we have the mesophyll layer. We have the chloroplast. We have the palisade. 
and we have the spongy layer. And finally, we have the chlorophyll. So this is option A, B, C, D, and what? E. Photosynthesis occurs in which of these? Photosynthesis occurs in which of these? Please, the answer is the mesophyll layer. And it is never the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is just the green pigment found in it, which enhances what? Photosynthesis. That is not where it occurs, it's just a pigment. Now, if the mesophyll layer wasn't included in the option, if the mesophyll layer wasn't included, the answer would have been C, palisade layer. If the palisade layer wasn't there, the answer would have been chloroplast. So, in the absence of chloro uh, mesophyll, palisade, the answer is what? Chloroplast. It is not spongy. It is not what? Chlorophyll layer. So, in conclusion, photosynthesis best occurs in the mesophyll layer, followed by this and what? This. Please take note. Take note of this equation. Very, very important. Don't forget that respiration occurs in the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. I'm looking for the board right now. Which is the powerhouse of the cell. Now, photosynthesis has two stages. Photosynthesis has two stages. Photosynthesis has two stages. We have one, the light stage, and so we have the dark stage. Please, the light stage occurs in the drama. Sometimes you are not giving granular, you will see thalacoid. Thalacoid. Alright? Photosynthesis occurs in that light stage occurs in the granular or thalacoid. Dark stage occurs where? In the stroma. In the stroma. Now light stage has four processes. The first process the first process is that chlorophyll. Chlorophyll traps sunlight. In the form of what? Solar energy. As soon as solar energy is trapped, it is converted to chemical energy. So the food we eat contains chemical energy. So it is this chemical energy they use in photosynthesizing. Please take note of that. The first process is that chlorophyll will trap sunlight as solar energy. It is then converted to what? Chemical energy. Number two is what? Photolysis of water. Photolysis of what? Water. Photo, light, lysis, breaking. So the process whereby water molecule is breaking is, is broken into hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion is called what? Photolysis of water. And of course, it is the first stage that it is the second stage. Why this one is the first stage, right? Please, the third stage is that this hydrogen ion produced, right, is taken by a coenzyme called NADP. That is nicotinamide adenosine dinucleotide phosphate. This H plus produced in the second stage is taken by a coenzyme called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Then after which this guy becomes reduced, we now be having Na NADPH this. It has been reduced because of what this hydrogen molecule attached. That is the third stage. Why the fourth stage is that energy is produced in the form of what ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. The first stage, chlorophyll traps sunlight in the form of solar energy, it gets converted to chemical energy. Second stage, photolysis of water. Third stage, this one, this hydrogen ion is taken by a coenzyme called nicotinamine aden adenosine dinucleotide phosphate. It of is during the process it is reduced to what I have here. Then the first stage is that energy is produced in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Please, it is sequentially, alright, it shouldn't be arranged zigzagly, alright, please take note of that. Uh, all you have to note concerning the dark stage which, of, which occurs in the stroma is that carbon 4 oxide is absorbed, carbon 4 oxide is absorbed, and sugar 
is formed. So please, these are the two phenomena, these are the two things that occur during the dark state that occurs in the stroma. Carbophoroza is absorbed, sugar is as well formed. So we are done with the light and dark stage that occurs during photosynthesis. Now the next one is what? Chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis, as the name implies, chemo, that is chemical. Chemosynthesis is the process whereby certain bacteria are able to manufacture their own food, all right? They are able to manufacture their own food with the use of a chemical called what? Hydrogen sulfide, all right? With the use of what? A chemical called what? Hydrogen sulfide. So please, chemosynthesis is also is an oxidative process. Take note of that. Is an oxidative waiting process. Please take note. Now, I said chemosynthesis is a process by certain bacteria are able to synthesize their own food with the use of a chemical called hydrogen sulfide. Of course, this guy has the smell of what a rotting egg. Alright. So Sorry, H2S. Okay, H2S. So I have H2S plus oxygen. What will I have? I have a I have water plus sulfur. So okay, I have water plus what? Sulfur. Then plus chemical energy. Plus chemical what? Energy. So this equation expresses what? Chemosynthesis. Is it balanced? Okay. I'll put two at the back of this place to balance oxygen. Hydrogen becomes two sulfur. So I'll put two at this at the back of sulfur. So this is a chemosynthetic equation. It hasn't uh, stopped. It has it. Now this chemical energy produced is capable of bringing together hydrogen sulfide and carbon four oxide to produce glucose to produce glucose water okay that is oxygen plus what chemical energy don't forget that so what do we have now okay plus sulfur sorry sulfur plus sulfur of course, plus energy, which is chemical what? energy. All right, so let us balance the equation. I have six carbon here, but I have just one. For me to balance it, I'll place six at the back of this place. All right, so automatically I have six, I have 12 oxygen. I have 12 oxygen here. 12 oxygen is the question what is something wrong here? Let me check. So, so, six carbon, six carbon. How many oxygen? I have 12, but I have 18 here. I have 18 here. Um, oh, please. Oh, 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 plus, plus water molecule, plus what? Oxygen molecule. Hmm? Water molecule plus oxygen molecule. So, what should we be having? Let me wrap it up. It's rough now. I have uh, glucose plus six moles of oxygen plus six moles of you have plus sulfur plus what? Chemical what? Energy. So what do we have now? Um. Trying to observe it. Where am I getting through? Oh, 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 I understand where the error is now. 
Of course, they've exhausted oxygen in this case. So it is chem once the chemical energy brings this and this together, I'll be having glucose, water, and water. So for please, sorry for that. Sorry for the for the delay. So let's balance the equation. I have let me run this for now. I have six carbon, so I'll definitely place six here. So which means I'll now be having what? Uh six that is twelve oxygen, right? For me to balance oxygen atom here, I'll place two at the back of water. Right? As two times six, twelve oxygen. Twelve oxygen balanced. Alright. So how many hydrogen do I have altogether? Twelve plus twelve, twenty-four. So I'll place two at the back of this place. So I'll place uh, twelve at the back of this place. I have twenty-four volts hydrogen. Then up there is twelve sulfur. I have twelve sulfur. So it is balanced. So what we have here is the complete equation that the fifth word chemocytensis. All right, so please take note of that. It is very, very important. So this chemical energy brings together this and this to form this, 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 and what? Chemical energy. So to balance the equation, you have to be having this. So please take note of that. Now, there are two bacteria that are involved in chemosynthesis. We have one of them to be nitrosomonas. Nitrosomonas, nitroso nitrosomonas converts ammonia to nitrites. Look at it. NH3 plus oxygen to produce HNO so does what? Water. How many hydrogen I have? Uh, okay, I mean I have I'll put two at the back of this place. Put two here. Alright, so I mean I have two nitrogen now. <coughs> Excuse me, I have two nitrogen. How many oxygen? I have three. Okay, uh, 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 what if I should place two here? I think that will balance it. Two nitrogen, two nitrogen, six hydrogen, two times two, four plus two, six, right? Then, how many oxygen? I have two oxygen here, but I have two times two, four plus two six so i'll place three at the back of this place two times two four plus this two six so this is a nitrite so the bacteria that converts ammonia into nitrite this is nitrite it is what nitrosomonas but this nitrite produced nitrite is converted to what nitrate by nitrobacter, nitrobacter is combined to nitrate by nitrobacter. So this is what we have on HNO2 plus H plus oxygen. You have HNO3. So this is what nitrate, nitrates. All right. So it is this nitrates that plants absorb, not nitrates. They don't absorb nitrate, nit uh, they absorb what? Nitrates. So let's balance the equation. I should put two here, and I put two here, and I put two here. How about that? Two hydrogen, two nitrogen, two hydrogen, two nitrogen. Two times two, four. Okay, let me move this one here. Two times two, four, plus two, six. So two times three, six. So this equation is based on nitrobacter, while this one is based on nitrosomonas. So please, this is all about photosynthesis and what? Chemosynthesis. Now the next one is heterotrophic nutrition. Heterotrophic. Alright, the organisms here, they are not capable of producing their own food. That is, they depend on already made food or they depend on the autotrophs for what? Nutrient or for survival. 
I told you we have different types of uh, ectotrophic. We have the parasitic nutrition. We have uh, holozoic. We have uh, saprophytic. We have saprophytic. We have uh, mutualistic. Let me open the value we just write symbiotic. And uh, we have uh, commensalistic. So all of these are types of heterotrophic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition is a type of nutrition in which a smaller, a smaller organism called parasite feeds at the expense of the larger organism called the host. That is, as it feeds on the host, it causes lots of diseases, infections, and illnesses, as the case may be. Now, parasitic nutrition is exhibited by tapeworm. Tapeworm is, the adult tapeworm is found in man. The adult tapeworm is found in man, so we have a tenia solium. Tenia solium, all right? Tenia solium is found in a uh, Pork means white tenia saginata is found in cattle. All right, cattle. Cattle, please take note of that. It is very, very important. Okay. Take one man parasitic. Tick found in sheep, goats, also what? Parasitic, all right. So tapeworm has the hook, it has the sucker, and it has the proglottids. It has the proglottids. Now the hook, as the name implies, it's used for what? Attachment. It's used for what? Attachment. So if I have it like this, if I have this, um. After like this, um, so this these ones they are called the hooks, all right. Then this one's here. This one that is where you have the soccer. Around this region you have. You have this in neck. Now, at the posterior region of the neck, you have what is called the proglossids. Proglossids. Now, the proglossids is that region where uh, where eggs are stored. In other words, their 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 reproductive organs are found in the proglossids. It is the function of these proglossids, which are segments. It can serve for reproduction. That is where the testes and ovaries are found. Of course, in that case, it means it serves the purpose of what? Reproduction. All right. It is from these proglossids new uh, organisms are formed. It gives rise to new organisms. So please, this region is the hooks. Here is this place, this place, as well as this place, you have the suckers. All right. So please, the flat surface possessed. That is, that is the flat body possessed by this organism is what brings about large surface area for what? Absorption. Large surface area for absorption. So which means that this organism lack a metric canal, all right? It feeds from its host through absorption with the use of what? Soccer, all right? How is it able to live in the intestine of its host? All right, the body is surrounded by what is called Cuticle, uh, let me use the word rather, uh, integument. All right, so text will tell you cuticle. Now, this structure found on the body of this uh, flatworm is what prevents it from being digested by the enzymes produced by its host. The stainless sodium is found in man, the other is the adult stage, 
and it's price. You see, Tina Saginata is found in cattle, Tina Sulum is also found in pork. All right, so I said the, the, the feed and strength between thick and sheep goats is what? Parasitic. So please take note of that. Then, under the Holozoic, we have omnivores, animals that feed on all food substances, carnivores, flesh eating animals. Herbivores, animals that feed on herbs like rabbits, goats, sheep, and whatever. You now have uh, scavengers. Scavengers are animals that feed on dead and decaying organic matters, like dead and decaying animals, or like vultures. Vultures are, are scavengers because they feed on decaying animals. All right? So please take note of that. Then, under saprophytic, under saprophytic nutrition, okay, please, under this region where we have parasitic nutrition, we have the endoparasite and we have the ectoparasites. The endoparasites are the one found inside the body of the organism, such as tapeworm, that is tenia solium, random, ascaris ubiquitis, hookworm, acyclosoma duodenale, blood fluke, please, blood fluke is also called schizosoma. Schizostoma, all right. Schizostoma is also called blood fluke. Wild liver fluke is also called that schizosoma hematobium. Schizosoma hematobium is blood fluke. Why um, fasciola hepatica? Hepatica is what liver fluke. The word hepatica is liver fluke. Please, another name for blood fluke is schizosoma. Like schizostoma. Hematobium, liver flu, uh, fasciola, hepatica. So please take note of that. Good. Apart from animals being parasitic, they, there is, we also have some examples of uh, plants that are parasitic. Please take note of this. Take note. Take note that Doda, Doda and Mistoto are parasitic plants. They are parasitic plants. Please, the root possessed by parasitic plants is called Ostoria. Please take notes. Ostoria are called suckers. The root possessed by parasitic plants are called what? Ostoria. Meant for what? Sucking. All right. Please, Doda and Mistoto are parasitic plants. You know what is called a uh, Carnivorous, carnivorous or insectivorous plants. Carnivorous or insectivorous plants. Examples are sundew. Sundew is insectivorous or carnivorous. We have Venus flytrap. We have Venus flytrap. And we have the pitcher plants. Pitcher plants. We have the butterworts, butterworts, and we have the bladderworts. All of these are carnivorous or insectivorous plants. They will ask you which of the following is insectivorous in nature or carnivorous in nature. These five are carnivorous or insectivorous in the sense that they feed on insects. Please, they exhibit trapping, they exhibit trapping and absorbing feeding mechanism. They exhibit trapping and what? Absorbing feeding mechanism. Take note of that. As now they trap the insects, they begin to absorb the nitrogen uh, molecule found in the organism. So please take note that these, 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 these are carnivorous. Doda and Mistoto are parasitic plants. I said the roots possessed by plastic plants are called what Ostoria, otherwise called suckers. So please take note of that. The next one is saprophytic nutrition. Now, these organisms are called what saprophytes. They are called saprophytes. Examples are mushroom, rhizopods, a bread mold, and black. And uh, black bread mold. You also have muco. All right, of these are saprophytes. Now, what are the features they possess? Please, the cell wall of saprophytes 
is not made up of cellulose. It has chitin instead. The cell wall of saprophyte is made up of chitin, non cellulose. Digestion is extracellular. Digestion is extracellular. It has hyphae, hyphae which, uh, which produces enzyme that helps to digest the substrate externally. Okay. Now, please, the vegetative part of the fungus is a mycelium. Is a mycelium. Please take note of that. The study of fungi is called mycology. The study of fungi is mycology, and of course, these organisms are found that are good decomposers because they are found feeding on dead and decaying organic matters. Please, the umbrella-like structure found in mushroom is called pileus. The structure that looks like an umbrella is called what? Pileus. Please take note of that. All right. Please, the the mushroom also has what is called stip. The stip is the stem that joins the pylos, all right, to the rhizome, to the rhizome. You know it's from this rhizome that the rhizoids are formed. The rhizoids are structures meant for what? Absorption of uh, nutrients and what? Water, because they lack true roots. So rhizoids perform the function of roots in higher plants. So please take note of that. Please, the fruiting body possessed by mushroom is called basidiocarp. Fruiting body found in mushroom is called what? Basidiocarp. Take note of that. A cell reproduction is that what? Spore formation. Spore formation. Of course, yeast is also an example of what? A saprophyte, to be specific. Yeast is an example of an ascomycete. Because we have different divisions of uh, saprophyte, we have uh, we have the basidium mycota, we have we have the zygo mycota, we have the asco mycota, we have the deuterium mycota, we have the chitrangel mycota. All the all these divisions are under uh, a saprophyte, right? Yeast belong to division asco mycota. Rhizopods belong to division as uh, okay zygo mycota. Mushroom belong to uh, division Basidium mycota, then penicillin belong to division Deuterium mycota. Penicillin was first discovered by Alexander Flemis. Alexander Flemis, please take note of that. Penicillin was first discovered by Alexander Flemis. So please take note of that. I believe we are done with. Uh, Please, the annulus processed by plants is meant for what? Spore dispersal. Alright, it's meant for what? Spore dispersal. Alright, please take note of that. It's meant for spore dispersal. So we are done with what? Saprophytic nutrition. The next one is symbiotic. Symbiotic nutrition is a type of nutrition that occurs in two organisms in which the both of them benefit from each other. No, none of them is harmed. For example, now the bacteria found in the rumen, the bacteria found in the rumen of ruminant animal. Okay, how do I put it now? Bacteria in the room that is bacteria slash the rumen of ruminant animal. What kind of association occurs? Symbiotic, symbiotic mutualistic words association because the bacteria helps. Okay, the bacteria help in breaking down the cellulose, the cell wall present in the cellulose uh, of plants. All right, you know that green plants they have what cellulose in their cell wall. So what these bacteria do? is to break down the cellulose that is present in the cell wall of the plant. We convert the cellulose into fatty acid. Please take note of that. We convert the cellulose into fatty acid. And of course, some quantity of what? Starch. All right? So that is an example of a symbiotic nutrition. Another one is 
the one that occurs between fungus and algae, and this it is called this is called what lichen, lichen. All right. Another one is the one that occurs between fungus and the root of higher plants. The root of higher plants. This is called the the mycorrhiza. All right. The astrum between the fun between fungus and root of higher plants is called what mycorrhiza. But what I call between fungus and algae is lichen because algae helps in because algae possesses pigments, possesses pigments with which uh, with which we use for what photosynthesis. While fungus provides shelter. All right. Another example of the symbiotic association is the one that occurs. Uh, in uh, the roots of leguminous plants, the roots of leguminous what plants, All right? Because there, there we have this bacteria are called nitrogen fixing bacteria. This bacteria found in the root nodules. This is the word in the root nodules of leguminous plants help. In fixing atmospheric nitrogen as nitrates inside the roots, while the roots themselves provide shelter. So it is what symbiotic. Another example of symbiotic association is one that exists between the hermits. Oh God, of mind. Is one that is, is, exists between the hermits crab and sea animals. All right. So please take notes. Association that occurs between hermit crab and sea animal is what a symbiotic association. So please, every symbiotic association is mutualistic. Take note of that. The next one is what commensalistic. It's a type of mutual that occurs between two organisms in which one one is bigger than the other, and these organisms are called what commensals. It occurs between shark. Shark and remora fish. Shark and what? Remora fish. This remora fish is found adhering itself to the guts of the shark. So that any food that falls from the mouth of the shark is consumed by it. So please take note of that. Is in that instance? Okay. Um, yes. The assumption that exists between cattle egrets and egrets. Okay, and cattle, the association that occurs between cattle and egrets, it is what? Mutualistic. It is mutualistic because none of them is harmed. Because this egret, once it's found on a cattle, what does it do? It, pick, it picks the parasite found on the body of the cattle. Please take note of that. It is very important. So, in our next class, we'll be discussing another interesting topic which could be transport system. Thanks for watching. Do have a wonderful day. Please endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment.